Today we are running through the mechanical and electrical installation of a dual submersible pumping station consisting of two pumps, three float switches, a pump tank pre-fitted with guide rails and twin discharge pipework and valves. We also have a dual pump controller which is required to be fitted in a dry area in a building or enclosure adjacent to the pumping station. For the purpose of this video we have a tank floor mounted whereas under normal circumstances this would be buried in the ground and all that would be visible at ground level is the manhole cover and frame. Okay, the first part of the installation we're going to deal with is the installation of the float switches into the tank um, and connecting these to the control panel. Okay, installing the three float switches, uh, you pass the end of each float switch up from the bottom through the float switch cable gland and pull the cable through until you get to the point where the float switches are in the tank and you can level them according to their operation. You tighten the gland up to hold the float switch in position. Three float switches are positioned such that the stop float is um, at the bottom, uh, the duty start float is above that and the alarm standby start float switch is above that. At this point the three float cables are passed through the cable duct along with the two pump cables attached to the pumps, five cables in total in this case. Usually one has a draw cord fed through the duct work up to the proposed position of the control panel. Once all the cables are pulled through the cable duct, the cables are individually attached to the control panel via the glands supplied with the control panel. You need to follow the instructions supplied with the control panel for the connection of these cables. Three float switch cables, two pump cables. Once the cables have been connected to the control panel, the pumps need to be checked for correct rotation and then at that point they can be lowered into the pumping station. Once the pumps are lowered into the pumping station, the chains can be hooked up on the hooks provided. And finally, once the pumping station is completely installed and the pumps are installed within the chamber, the manhole cover can be inserted into the frame and the pumps can put, be put into automatic operation. 